you are going to die. That's right. Like every single living organism, you are not immortal. Wow, really? I didn't know that. Anyways, an organism's life cycle starts off with the development of a healthy immune system, eventually reaching its physical peak. Then, everything begins to degrade, with the immune system eventually failing to sustain the organism, leading to death. This is the inevitable process of aging. Aging happens in various different methods. You see those tips at the end of the chromosome? Yeah, those are called telomeres. As you age, the cells in your body are going to replicate itself over and over and over and over and over again. And while this happens, the telomeres of the chromosomes also shrink over time. Telomeres eventually shrink to a point where it causes the cell to no longer function properly. And of course, this leads to a scuffed immune system. And then you die! So this basically makes the telomeres an aging clock of the organism. Oh, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. There's another process to aging called oxidative stress. In order for me to explain what oxidative stress is, I'll have to explain to you what free radicals are. Free radicals are basically atoms with an unpaired electron. And with an unpaired electron, obviously that'll create an imbalance of electrons if you have basic knowledge in chemistry or whatever. So when your body fails to detoxify these free radicals, obviously these free radicals are going to damage your immune system. They're going to take chunks out of your cells, uh, create mutations, you know, such and such. Oh, oh my goodness. Why did I say that? Why? You know, such and such, you know, all the bad things that happen to you. So, the buildup of free radicals inside your body is called oxidative stress. So yeah, aging sucks. But did you know that two animals on this planet have evolved to become immune to these effects of aging? That is, the lobster and the tortoise. Both lobsters and tortoises have been found to show negligible senescence. Negligible senescence is basically where an organism does not exhibit traits of biological aging. And lobsters and tortoises have both shown effects of negligible senescence. Lobster! The crustacean that crawls at the bottom of the sea that somehow ends up on your plate. These lobsters have been found to live an estimated 45 to 50 years in the wild. So, how do lobsters do it? Over time, lobsters have evolved an enzyme called telomerase, which are able to prevent the shrinkage of the telomeres on their chromosomes. So this essentially means that their DNA doesn't get corrupt as they age. And that's because their enzymes are constantly repairing it. Now, of course, this doesn't mean the lobster is immortal. It can die from many various different factors. But this just plays a huge role in the lobster's longevity. Now what about the tortoise? Get it? Because tortoises are slow? <laughs> tortoises have been found to have evolved immunity to oxidative stress, one of the major factors for aging. Remember those free radicals that I talked about earlier? Well, organisms actually do need that in order to convert their food into energy. What this essentially means is that these free radicals, or more specifically, reactive oxygen species, cannot fully be rid of. Instead, there needs to be a balance between these free radicals and the body's ability to detoxify them. And tortoises are absolute gamers when it comes to that. Tortoises have slow metabolism, which basically means that they don't need as much food. Therefore, the tortoise will require less use of the free radicals. But it also helps that they are poor kill- I don't know how to pronounce that word, bro. But what that means is that their bodies can function at a wide range of temperatures. And in turn, they're less stressed by the temperatures. And stress plays a huge role in the accumulation of free radicals. So you know those vitamin supplements that you take? Well, those are what detoxify the free radicals that enter your body. And tortoises basically produce a lot of that. But, did you know that the tortoise can also repair their telomeres? <gasps> That essentially makes them a biological beast. It's no wonder that they live for so long. Fun fact, did you know that the oldest tortoise that ever lived was born in 1750 and died in 2006? So, how do these two animals compare? Interestingly, both lobsters and tortoises don't chew their food. Instead, once the food is consumed, the stomach then breaks it down. Lobsters and tortoises are also both cold-blooded. 
Lobsters have gills to breathe, while tortoises have a kind of diffusion method to breathe. The nervous system of lobsters and tortoises are both very unique to each other. Interestingly, there is currently an ongoing debate as to whether crustaceans can actually feel pain. On the other hand, tortoises have been found to feel things through their shell. They can feel both pleasure and pain through their shell, or otherwise called carapace. In reproducing offspring, both lobsters and tortoises have been found to have some sort of territory system in competing to find mates. Both organisms also use eggs. Both animals are also symmetrical. In terms of unique adaptations, lobsters evolved their claws. The tortoise, on the other hand, evolved its strong shell. This shell can withstand thousands of pounds of pressure. In terms of habitats, lobsters are in water. Tortoises, on the other hand, are mostly on land. And of course, both of their life cycles can last very, very long. In their roles in the ecosystem, the lobster is mostly there to transfer energy up the food chain. Turtles, on the other hand, disperse seeds and create natural pathways in their habitats. Now, looking at these comparisons, you can tell that lobsters and tortoises, surprisingly, have quite a bit in common. And this is despite the fact that both animals break into different phylums. So that is the lobster and the tortoise compared. How both organisms evolved negligible senescence to extend their lifespans. Thanks for watching.